Hello and welcome to Film of the Century of the Week. I'm George Roth and I'm the host of Channel 5's all new program. We'll be showing films and short films within the public domain of the United States with new segments being added each week. Now this week we jump ahead from 1926 where we just were with the general to 1946. The United States had just emerged as one of the victorious parties from the bloodiest conflict that the world had ever seen to that point. Now, with the war over, the cinema industry was beginning to kick back into gear like never before, and film noir pieces of the late 1940s and early 1950s were taking the nation by storm. This was the beginning of the golden age of cinema, as some historians call it. The Stranger, while not officially a part of film noir, was a post-war mystery film that dealt with some of the wartime horrors of Third Reich concentration camps that most of the nation did not even know existed at that time. The Stranger stars Edward G. Robinson as driven government agent Mr. Wilson, who is searching for escaped Nazi war criminal Fons Kindler, played by Orson Welles. It premiered just before Independence Day on July 2, 1946, and was released theatrically by RKO Pictures, which had previously released Orson Welles' debut picture, Citizen Kane. It was one of the first films that Welles directed and starred in that was not primarily written by him. Though Wells did uncredited rewrites to the screenplay during production, the majority of the film was conceived and written by Anthony Veeler, with some minor alterations done in production by famed director John Huston. Huston was famous for directing such things as Maltese Falcon and Asphalt Jungle at the time, and would go on to have a long directorial career lasting until the mid-80s. His son, Jack Huston, had starring roles in Boardwalk Empire and American Hustle. This was the first mainstream American film to show footage of concentration camps following World War II, and the shock and horror of these revelations was incorporated into the plot. And so, without further delay, from director and actor Orson Welles, I present to you from 1946, The Stranger. That's all there is to it. Let him escape. In my view, it's all very irregular. It might entail the most embarrassing repercussions. Exactement. Certainly. It's the responsibility of the first magnitude. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, but you oh, must blast see. all this discussion. What good are words? I'm sick of words. Hang the repercussions and the responsibility. If I fail, I am responsible. Leave the cell door open. Let him escape. Let him. It's our only chance. Oh, Mr. Well, you can threaten me with the bottom pits of hell, and still I insist. This obscenity must be destroyed. Do you hear me? Destroyed! Todos los pasajeros desembarquen. All passengers ready to disembark. I'm traveling for my health. I'm traveling for my health. Tengan listos sus pasaportes. Get your passports ready. I'm traveling for my health. She left for free. I don't understand. You business in this country, senora. I'm joining my husband. Make a Mr. 
Mr. Kompolowski. He takes care of himself, Cesar. Your business in this country, Senor. I'm traveling for my health. How? <clears throat> I am traveling for my health. Oh. You are a native of what country? Poland. Oh, Poland. Trata permanece. Next, please. Para qué vino usted a este país, señor? ¿Qué pasó? Yo lo voy a seguir a pie, tú vete en el carro. Ah, bien. Hotel Nacional, 7702. Hello? Yes. You haven't lost him. You sure you know where he's going? My wife is following him. He's gone to the photographers, probably to get a new passport and new instructions. Hold it. I wish to know the whereabouts of Franz Kindler. Franz Kindler. There is no Franz Kindler. Franz Kindler is dead and cremated. It's a command! I have a message for Franz Kindler from the All Highest. It, it is forbidden. I command you in the name of that authority. You, you know the, the name he is using? United States, the town of Harper. Down Miss Peabody's. It's just down the road here, Peace. This way, mister. Yes, thank you.
I may come in? Yes, of course. Does Mr. Charles Rankin live here? Yes, he does, but he isn't here right now. You expect him? Yes, in a few minutes. How soon? Well, a few minutes. A few minutes. I may... <clears throat> I may wait here. Well, yes, if you like. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. You a friend of Mr. Rankin's? Yes, a friend. Uh, I'm Mary Longstreet. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Rankin ought to be here now. Sometimes he stays after his last class, but He'll be coming straight here today, I'm sure. Because this is our wedding day. You are getting married? Yes, at 6 o'clock. I know it's most unconventional, my being here today, but I want to get these curtains up. When he comes, which way does he come? Why, uh, from, from uh, Web Webster Hall. It's, it's the big dome building right over there, you see? I shall meet him. Well, who shall I say that could... Franz. It's I, Franz. Fine, again. We mustn't be seen talking together. Go back to the church, into the woods. Into the woods, you understand me? Follow the path. I'll meet you there. Hello, Professor Rankin. Mr. Hello, Rankin. man. What are you up to? Paper chase. Oh, paper chase? I go ahead and lay the trail. You ought to have Jerry's job, Mr. Rankin. Take a little off that waistline. <laughs> no, you ought to go with us, Mr. Rankin. Oh, where to? The Hiya, woods. Blondie. Oh, uh -huh. buzzard. The woods? Well, I, I'd like to. I'm afraid I have a couple of things to attend to. Well, join us later. We'll be out till dark. All right. Oh, we'll catch up with you. Yes, my Nicky. I thought I had been hanged. Hmm. The others, but not I. A dead man could not stand face to face with you, friends. You're not much changed. But you're back in your old uniform. Not very much the same. Franz, I am a different man than before. I too. I too am different, Conrad. I... You know how I gathered and destroyed every single item in Germany and Poland that might have served as a clue to my identity. Well, guess what I'll be doing at 6 o'clock tonight? Standing before a minister of the gospel with a woman's hand in mine, the daughter of a justice of the United States Supreme Court, a famous liberal. The girl's even good to look at. Yes, the camouflage is perfect. Who would think to look for the notorious Franz Kindler in the sacred precincts of the Harper School, surrounded by the sons of America's first families? And I'll stay hidden the day when we strike again. France. There will be another war? Of course. War is an abomination, saved the Lord. It is to tell you this that I am here. He set me free that I set might you come free. here and tell... Who set tell you free? To you. The whole highest. You don't mean... I mean God. I'm a new man since I found you. You, Conrad, a religious. Franz, Franz, all doors were open to me. All doors. It was one of God's miracles.
we freed you so you'd lead them to me. Have you been followed? Were you followed here? Yes. Who followed you? The evil one. He looked like any other man. He was, he was dressed like any other man. He even smoked a pipe. But I recognized him through his disguise. And I killed him. Striking from on high down. That's will be done. You killed him, the man with the pipe? The man who followed you? No one else followed you? must be brought to salvation, Franz. Confess your sins as I have. Proclaim your guilt. Only thus you can attain salvation. You really think so, Conrad? It will take strength. Hmm. Such strength as can come only from God. Kneel by me, friends, And together we will pray to him to give you strength. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am not worthy to be called thy son. Say these words after me. I despair of my sins. I despair of my sins. Oh, God of all goodness. How oh God. could I ever have offended thee? Of all goodness. Hey, this way, fellas! Don't let him get away! Beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Forsaking all others, keep the only unto her so long as ye both shall live. I will. Mary, wilt thou have this man for thy wedded husband to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep the only unto him so long as ye both shall live? I will. Afternoon. Afternoon. Wedding? Yep. Judge Longstreet's daughter. He's Supreme Court Justice, you know. Bottle of aspirin, please. Right back there, third shelf down at the top. You'll see the big ones on the left, economy size. Have to get it yourself, mister. Right oh. back there. <laughs> 
All your needs are on our shelves. Just look around and help yourselves. Right in there, right this one. That's that's it. That's it. Living down to Mrs. Peabody's. Just a few days only. Uh, some coffee too, please. Or should I get it myself? Cafeteria style around here, Mister. That's right. <laughs> Self service. The usual thing. Yes, that's that's three dollars even, Mister Todd. <laughs> No limit on the cream. But all the people around here take it black. <laughs> the one on the right, mister. Oh, thank you. Who is Miss Longstreet marrying? One of the teachers down at school. A stranger in town. I issued the license. Oh. Yep. I'm town clerk. Uh, checkers. All right. Town clerk, huh? Check. Well, that must be quite a responsibility. Oh, town clerk runs the town, you might say. Yeah. We usually make it for uh, 15, 20. We often play as high as 25 cents the game. Well, that's kind of stiff for me, but... I'll take a flyer. Make a million, lose a million. <laughs> That's the way it goes. <laughs> I move. Hmm? All right. Well, you must uh, know just about everybody in town here. It's not just about. Know everybody. Here on business? Mm hmm. Uh huh. School business? Oh, no, no. Selling something? Oh, no, no. Buyer? Oh, antique dealer. They all come to Harper. Judge Longstreet's got the best collection in these parts. Won't do you no good, though. No, I don't suppose he'd sell. Happen to know there are any other out-of-town buyers here? Uh, let me see. Come to think of it, there's a fellow come in this morning. Yeah? Came on the same bus with you. Okay. Left his suitcase here, never did come back for it. He, he might have been one of them. Uh, no. No, he was more of the missionary type. Wasn't in here but a minute, just looked in the phone book. Tiny little fellow he was. Uh, uh, thinnish. Uh, unfortunate looking. Hurt your head, mister? Uh, uh, no, no, nothing serious. Oh, that's too bad. It's a game you got to keep your mind on. Ha! Ah, 25 cents, please. Pretend I'm not disappointed. Hello, yet. Father. Has anybody seen my brand new husband? Don't tell me he's deserted you already. Yes, looks as if the brute. <laughs> Listen, Red, have you seen Charles? <laughs> you go find him for me. Go on. Go on, go find Charles. Hurry up. everywhere for him, Mary, and I can't find him. Well, I wonder where he could be. I'm getting worried. Are you, darling? What about? Charles, you've changed. Don't you think you'd better? After all, aren't we supposed to be going on a honeymoon or something? <laughs> Give me five minutes.
you working up there on the clock? No, no, I was just cleaning around it. Oh, it's a beautiful thing, from what I can see out front. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, my name's Wilson. Oh, I'm Longstreet, No Longstreet. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Wilson. I uh, couldn't judge any too well out front, but I'd say it was uh, late 16th century, probably by Hobrecht of Strasbourg. Uh, the clock. Well, uh, I wouldn't know. My brother-in-law is going to work on it. Is he up there now? No, no. He's on his honeymoon. He plans to work on it when he gets back. Oh. Is he an expert? Well, yes, but it's really more of a hobby with him. Really? <laughs> well, it is with me, too. Oh. Honeymoon? Yes. He and my sister. Um, he has to be back on Friday because of the examinations. Oh. Uh, he's one of the teachers at the school. Uh, his name is Rankin. It's nice to be able to show it to someone who knows what Revere Silver's all about. Mm. But personally, my specialty is pewter. Oh, yes, uh, pewter. Uh, uh, the uh, Revere workmanship, although uh, uh, sometimes heavy in design, almost invariably shows the sign of a master craftsman. It's, it's beautiful. Noah. Hello, Mary. Hello, honey. Hello, Hello Mary, Adam. dear. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, my daughter Mary. Oh, how do you how do, 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 Mr. Wilson? My son in law, Charles Rankin. How do you do? How do you do? I Mr. hope Wilson. you don't mind my intruding on your homecoming. Good evening, Mary. Go on. <laughs> Jeff, how are you? Fine. You're looking good. Oh, Welcome home, home, Miss Mary, dear. Hi, Sarah. Sarah. Oh, oh, Sarah, you sweet thing. <laughs> if you don't sit down, it'll get cold. <laughs> Come on, Jen. Charles. I'm so glad. Well, sister, how are the mountains? They were perfectly marvelous. Uh, Mr. Wilson, will you come sit over here on my right? Jeff, your usual place, and darling, you're right there. You ought to see Charles on skis. He's absolutely oh. wonderful. No. Yes, darling, you are, and I'm pretty good, too, aren't I? Very. Well, for a beginner. Do you remember to keep your knees together and your apparatus in? <laughs> yes, Freshie, I did. <laughs> Mr. Wilson here is compiling a catalog of Paul Revere Silver. How nice. Mr. Wilson is also an authority on clocks. Oh, really? That's Charles' hobby, too. Yes, though, your brother tells me. I understand you're going to fix the one in the church tower. Well, I may try. Well, that's quite an undertaking. I'm sure the kind of a wife I am, I hope he fails. <laughs> I like Harper just the way it is, even to the clock that doesn't run. Oh. Have you been at Harper long, Mr. Wilson? Mm, since uh, Friday, a week ago. Well, you lost today. I patched you up on Friday. By the way, how's the head? Oh, very much improved, thanks to you, Doctor. You were hurt on Thursday, remember? The day of the wedding. Yes, that's right. Uh, Wednesday, I left Bangor. You were hurt, Mr. Wilson? Oh, nothing serious. <laughs> Well, serious enough to raise a bump on his head the size of a billiard ball. The usual door. <laughs> the thing your back, sister, that dog of yours has been inconsolable. <laughs> well, all right, Red, wait a minute. Here you are. It's for missing me. How's that? Yeah, it's a good boy. How was your meeting, Adam? Oh, irritating. Foreign Policy Association. I read that fellow's report. Standish, yes. I think he's full of prunes. Well, that's the way we used to talk in the 1930s, Noah. Standish? The uh, London Times man of Berlin. Yes, of course, he was quoting rumors mostly. Men drilling by night, uh, underground meeting places, pagan rituals. Do you believe him, Paul? Well, anything's possible. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, there may be some fanatics, but no German in his right mind can still have a taste for war. Do you know Germany, Mr. Rankin? I'm sorry, I, I have a way of making enemies when I'm on that subject. I get pretty unpopular. Well, we shall consider it the objective opinion of an objective historian. Historian? A psychiatrist could explain it better. The German sees himself as the innocent victim of world envy and hatred conspired against, set upon by inferior peoples, inferior nations. He cannot admit to error, much less to wrongdoing, not the German. We chose to ignore Ethiopia and Spain, but we learned from our casualty list the price of looking the other way. Men of truth everywhere have come to know for whom the bell tolled, but not the German. He still follows his warrior gods, 
marching to Wagnerian strains, his eyes still fixed upon the fiery sword of Siegfried. And in those subterranean meeting places that you don't believe in, the German's dream world comes alive and he takes his place in shining armor beneath the banners of the Teutonic Knights. Mankind is waiting for the Messiah, but for the German, the Messiah is not the Prince of Peace. He's another Barbarossa, another Hitler. Well, then you, uh, you have no faith in the reforms that are being effected in Germany. Well, I don't know, Mr. Wilson. I, I can't believe that people can be reformed except from within. The basic principles of equality and freedom never have, never will take root in Germany. The will to freedom has been voiced in every other tongue. All men are created equal, liberté, égalité, fraternité, but in German, there's Marx. Proletarians unite, you have nothing to lose but your chains. But Marx wasn't a German, Marx was a Jew. But my dear Charles, if we concede your argument, there is no solution. Well, sir, once again, I differ. Well, what is it then? Annihilation. Down to the last babe in arms. Charles, I can't imagine you're advocating a Carthaginian peace. Well, as an historian, I must remind you that the world hasn't had much trouble from Carthage in the past 2,000 years. <laughs> well, there speaks our pedagogue. Uh, speaking of teachers, Mr. Wilson. Yes, yes. The faculty is coming for tea next Tuesday. If you have nothing better to do, would you like to join us? Uh, I'd like to, but uh, my work here is finished. I'm leaving Harper tomorrow. Extraordinary, isn't it? Clocks being Mr. Wilson's hobby, too. Yes, isn't it? Well, Red, how do you like your new house? He loves it. Come here, Red. I think I'll take you for a walk. Come here, boy. Oh, Daddy, you don't have to take him out. Just let him out. He won't run off. All right. I need to walk. I'm restless. Come on, boy. That's good. I'll be in Washington tomorrow afternoon. You were right about Rankin. He's above suspicion. Uh, I want Washington, D.C. Well, who but a Nazi would deny that Karl Marx was a German because he was a Jew? I think I'll stick around for a while.
sort of dreaming about that little man. What little man? Oh, you know, dear, I told you about him. He came here the day we were married. Light me a cigarette, would you? I've never had a dream like that before. It frightened me. Thanks. You know, that little man was walking all by himself across a deserted city square. Wherever he moved, he threw a shadow. But when he moved away, Charles, the shadow stayed there behind him and spread out just like a carpet. It... Wish you could think who he might have been. You're overtired. Yes, perhaps. Here, dear, put this out, will you? Put him in the cellar. Oh, darling, no wonder he's howling. He's never been locked up in his entire life. Ready to live with us, he must be trained. At night, he will sleep in the cellar. In the daytime, he'll be kept on a leash. Charles, I don't believe in dogs being treated like prisoners. Red's my dog. Please, Mary. I know what's best. brought him home. Said he howls all night. Oh. Uh, fishing any good in these parts? Pretty fair. Would you like to come along? I'm uh, afraid I've got the wrong clothes on, but the fish probably won't mind. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just not lucky today, that's all. <laughs> Would you like a candy bar? Well, I don't mind if I do. Thank you. All your folks like fishing? Oh, my dad's great. He always brings in something. Well, what about Charles? Charles? Oh! <laughs> I have to call him Mr. Rankin at school. I get a little mixed up sometimes. <laughs> uh, he spends most of his time on the clock, you know. Why don't you like him, Noah? What do you mean? Well, you don't like your brother-in-law. It's not my business, but uh, I wish you'd tell me why. Well, I, I like him well enough. I, I don't know any reason why I shouldn't. Don't tell me I'm butting in because I know I am, but I can't help myself. It's my business. I hate bringing you into this, Noah, but you're the only one I can turn to. I need your help very badly. Well, what is it? Your sister may be in great trouble. I know that you're man enough for what I'm going to ask you to do for her. The truth is, I'm not really an antique dealer. I'm a sort of a detective. Well, what do you want me to do, Mr. Wilson? It would help me a lot if I knew every move Charles Rankin made on the day of his wedding, right up to the ceremony. Well, I should be able to, unless Charles realizes what I'm doing. I'll keep him busy. Gee, Mr. Wilson, you must be wrong. Mary wouldn't fall in love with that kind of a man. I hope I am wrong, Noah, but that's the way it is. People can't help who they fall in love with. Good evening, Mr. 
Carter. Can you, Mr. Wilson? Eighty-five cents. Here, you and Professor Ankton uh, aim to fix the clock. That's right. Figured to tell time rightly? Uh-huh. And will the angel circle around the belfry? Is that a man or woman angel, Mr. Wilson? I don't know. Well, reckon don't make much of a difference amongst angels. <laughs> Well, give up? No, oh, no, no. We'll, we'll play it out. Uh, that's my privilege, 25 cents. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, that uh, Mr. Rankin pick up his supper this evening? Yeah. No. Hey. He trying to get Stu up there about now. Oh. Yes, I know. Gets dark early these days. Mm. <laughs> Our little man never did pick up his suitcase, did he? No. Strange. Ain't it, though, huh? I've been tempted once or twice to look and see what's inside it. Maybe it's locked. Well, it seems to me that under the circumstances that you have a perfect right. You do? Uh, well, I wouldn't want to do it without a witness. Oh, that's me. It is? Well, that's all I wanted to know. I'm trying to look in that thing to see if it's in here. <laughs> Wonder what's in it. Soil linen. Uh -huh. Sweater. Uh -huh. Soap and a razor wrapped in a towel with SS Cristobal written across it. Uh -huh. A pair of old shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but religious pamphlets. Yep, that's all. Good uh -huh. evening, Mr. Potter. Oh. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilson. Hi. Mr. Wilson, hi. You, Mr. Rankin. Uh, Mr. Potter and I have been poking our noses into somebody else's business. Yeah, that suitcase. That chap left it here, and he never did call back. Oh. That's been more than two weeks ago. Did he say what he was doing in the record? No. Looked in the phone book. Didn't telephone. Kind of funny looking he was. A scrawny little fella with big, starry blue eyes. Had a queer walk. Like any second, he might break into a run. Did he have a foreign accent? Why, yes, he did. Uh, but not so much of an accent as a foreign way of talking. Do you happen to know who he could be, Mrs. Rankin? Why, why, no. I was just trying to complete your mystery for you. Don't all foreign strangers have to have foreign accents? Mary, have you seen Red? Why, no. Not since I took him home to you a couple of days ago. Well, he's been spending all his time out in the woods, and he doesn't even come home for his meals. But you told me he never ran away. He never did. No, well, that's why Noah's so anxious. Come on, Mary. Good night, Mr. Wilson. Good night. Good night, Noah. Good night. He did go to Rankin's house, and your sister did see him. Did Mary say so? She started to. Now, your sister is a fine woman, Noah, but she must find out the kind of man she's married to. You don't know Mary. She, she wouldn't listen to anything against him, much less believe. Noah, we must arrange it so that she finds out for herself. You understand? One thing certain, she knows nothing now, nothing at all. Except that he didn't want her to admit having seen someone she did see. I'd give something to know what explanation he's making right now. I was...
was a student in Geneva. There was a girl. The night before I was to leave, we went out on the lake together. She told me unless I promised to marry her, she'd never return to Shua. Oh, I thought she was joking. Naturally, but she wasn't. Before I could stop her, she stood up in the boat. Well, I, I dived in after her, but it was too late. She was gone. Only one person knew we were on the lake together. Her brother. He knew I hadn't murdered her, but he, he told me he'd be willing to call it an accident for compensation. I gave him all I had and left Switzerland. As the years went by, I allowed myself to believe that the dead past really was dead. And then, on our wedding day, Mary, he appears again. Her brother, the little man. This, this awful thing around by yourself. You're a very wonderful person, Mary. I love you very much. Oh, Charles. Why, why didn't he go back for his things? Once he had money, he could he could afford better. Darling, I'm I'm terribly nervous. I think I'll work up in the clock alone tonight by myself. It will calm me. You understand, don't you? Of course I understand. Shall I walk you home? No, dear, there's no need for that. It's pretty late. Oh, that's all right. In Harper, there's nothing to be afraid of. I'll bet he couldn't bark or anything. He just crawled this far and died. Why do you think he died? Well, let's go and find out. That's young Longstreet's dog, Red. Looks like he's dead to me. Yeah. They're, they're taking him up to... Dr. Lawrence's office. Would well, you know anything about it? What if what the world's the matter with him? Uh, checkers? No, no, thank you. That coke's a nickel. Thank you, Mr. Rankin. Uh, how long could the dog have lived with that amount of poison in it? Oh, not more than a minute or so, I'd say. Well, then Red must have been poisoned within a few hundred yards of where you found him, Noah. And the latter part of the distance, he must have been moving slower and slower. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thanks, Jeff. Mr. Peabody, would you please get that magazine rack in and hurry up about it? Yes, Mr. Potter. Hurry up about it. Move along and... Uh, afternoon, Mr. Wilson. Afternoon, Noah. Bring him right in there. say about this kind of murder. Is it the same as killing a man? 
it ought to be. It's just as bad. Four paws, muddy. No mud on hind. Dry leaves mixed with the mud. Red must have been digging somewhere in the woods. Have you any idea what for, Mr. Wilson? The body, I think. Miney case. The little man. Then. Loading up like this? Yeah. Just going on a search. What you after? Found a machine oil. What search? And for the body. State police deputized half the town. Just reach up there, fourth shelf. If one misses the news open the clock tower. What body are they searching for? My bet is the fella that left his bags here. Strongly little Dutch. Unhappy looking. <laughs> I knew he'd come to a bad end. That ought to be 15 cents, Mr. Professor, I'll just put it on your account. Sarah told me you're up here. Well, why are you packing? Are we going somewhere? We aren't, dearest. I am. What are you talking about? As a rule, men leave their wives because they don't love them, but I must leave you because I do. Oh, you won't object once you know the kind of man you marry. But you are the man I've married, and that's all that matters. Darling, I meant it when I said for better, for worse. Even to, to killing Red. <laughs> Murder can be a chain, Mary, one link leading to another until it circles your neck. Red was digging at the grave of the man I killed. Yes, your little man. You killed him? With these hands. The same hands that have held you close to me. Now, are you satisfied to let me go? Why? Why did you do it? I'd have given him all I had, but his dreams were far grander. He knew that your father was well to do. He knew that Justice Longstreet would be glad to protect his daughter from any scandal by paying a few thousand dollars. Oh, Mary, I, I should have gone away and lost myself in a world where he could never find me, but I loved you, and I was weak. Darling. If one of us goes, we'll both go. You would have shared half my trouble if I'd had any. Charles, what is there to connect you with that man? Nothing, actually. You're the only one that knows I knew him. Well, then you need have no fear. If I'm the only one who can speak. But Mary, in failing to speak, you become part of the crime. But I'm already a part of it. Because I'm a part of you. Don't you shudder at the first touch of my hands as though it was the touch of death. It's nerves. Oh, hold me close, Charles. Hold me close. Peabody, you go back to town with the sheriff and open up the coroner's office. Yes, I knew sir. darn well it was the same color. Of course, he's changed some. Uh, being buried in the earth does it. Evening, Mr. Wilson. Evening, Mr. Potter. Evening, Noah. Evening, Mr. Potter. Mess, ain't it? What do we do about Mary? We can't leave her alone with him now that we know. Well, she realizes now that whatever story he told her about Meineke was false. Noah? I think your sister should be ready to hear the truth. Charles. Hmm. Will they make me look at the body? Well, 
I shouldn't think so. Because I couldn't do it. I mean, I don't think I could. See, I've never seen a dead person. I... How many are you having to tea, Mary? 28 altogether, mm -hmm. I think, dear. You didn't eat nothing at dinner. Isn't that You'll rather be a lot? again, Miss Mary. 28 for just you, Sarah? No, who will manage all right? But suppose I should... Should what? I don't know. I only know I'm terrified of seeing anybody or being seen. Mary, I... you must get tight hold of yourself. If you're determined to go through with this thing, you must know beforehand exactly what you're going to do and say at all times. Perfect naturalness at all times. Now, darling, listen to me. Darling. I am prepared to go to the police. It's your father, Miss Mary. He wants to talk to you. Yes, thank you, Sarah. me to come over. Did he ask me to? He said he wanted to see me alone. There's nothing unusual about a father wanting to see his daughter, is there? Is there? No. All right, Adam, I'll be right over. Don't you think that's rather strange? Strange? No, it's strange. Tell you what I'll do. I'll go over to the church and work on the clock while you're with your father. And you can buy and pick me up later. I'm so afraid. I'm so pointed as wanted to see me alone. And his voice sounded so different. And you know what you're going to say, don't you? Something wrong? Mr. Wilson is here on a very serious matter. We must try to help him every way possible. He wants to ask a few questions of you. What, what, what do you want to know, Mr. Wilson? You know about the body that was discovered yesterday, Mr. Rankin? Yes. Did you ever meet the deceased? No, 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 I never met him. Have you seen the body? No. Well, then, uh, how can you be sure you never met him? Of course, I can't be certain. Mr. Wilson, do you suspect me of something? If so, what? Of shielding a murderer. Perhaps this photograph will refresh your memory. Do you recognize this man? That is Conrad Meineke, commander in charge of one of the more efficient concentration camps. You know him, don't you? You have met him here in Harper. No, no. I, I've never seen that man, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Judge, would you mind putting out the lights? I've been showing your father some films, and I'd like you to see them, too. I'm on the Allied Commission for the Punishment of War Criminals. It's my job to bring escaped Nazis to justice. It's that job that brought me to Harper. Well, surely you don't think that... Mr. Wilson, I've never... I've never so much as even seen a Nazi. Well, you might without your realizing it. They look like other people and act like other people when it's to their benefit. A uh, gas chamber, Mrs. Rankin. The candidates were first given hot showers so that their pores would be open and the gas would act that much more quickly. And this is a lime pit in which hundreds of men, women, and children were buried alive. Why do you want me to look at these horrors? All this you're seeing, it's all the product of one mind. 
the mind of a man named uh, Franz Kindler. Franz Kindler? Yes, he was the most brilliant of the younger minds from the Nazi party. It was Kindler who conceived the theory of genocide, mass depopulation of conquered countries, so that regardless of who won the war, Germany would emerge the strongest nation in Western Europe, biologically speaking. Unlike Gables, Himmler, and the rest of them, Kindler had a passion for anonymity. The newspapers carried no picture of him. Oh, no, and just before he disappeared, he destroyed every evidence that might link him with his past, down to the last fingerprint. There's no clue to the identity of Franz Kindler, except one little thing. He has a hobby that almost amounts to a mania. Clocks. So have lots of people. You, yourself. Well, I, uh, I'm not quite finished, Mrs. Rankin. In prison, in Czechoslovakia, a war criminal was awaiting execution. This was Conrad Meinecke, one-time executive officer for Franz Kindler. He was an obscenity on the face of the earth. The stench of burning flesh was in his clothes. But we gave him his freedom on the chance that he might lead me to Kindler. He led me here, Mrs. Rankin. And here I lost him. Until yesterday. Your dog, Red, found him for me. But unfortunately, Meinecke was dead and buried. Now, in all the world, there is only one person who can identify Franz Kindler. That person is the one who knows, knows definitely, who Meinecke came to harbor to see. No, he's not a Nazi. My Charles is not a Nazi. You were in Rankin's house during the afternoon of the day you were married. Where? Where? Rankin's house. Oh, yes, yes. Did anyone come while you were there? Not that I remember. Now, try hard to remember. It's not so long ago. Only two weeks. You were hanging curtains. No one came. Were you alone all the time? No. Who else was there? Charles. He came right after his last class, and, and we were together for more than an hour. You, you have nothing to link my husband with this man, Kindler, except a wild suspicion. It's a ridiculous suspicion. You're trying to use me to implicate him, and you can't. You can't involve me in a lie, and that's... That's all it is, is a lie. It's a lie, you know. It's a lie. It's a lie. Mary, Mary! Wait a minute, Mary! Mary! Wait a minute, sister! <laughs> You know that your welfare and Noah's means more to me than anything, don't you? Yes, yes. You've got to face this thing with complete honesty, sister. Your entire happiness may well depend on your telling me the absolute truth. If Mr. Wilson is right, and you have innocently married a criminal, well, then there is no marriage. There's no call upon your loyalty as a wife. He's good. He's good. He wouldn't hurt any, anybody except to protect somebody he loved. He's... He's good. Well, then the truth can't hurt him. Charles was not with you that afternoon, sister. I remember you saying so when you came home. You're against him too, Adam. Yes, you are. You've never liked him. That's why you don't believe me now. Leave us alone, Adam. He's not a Nazi. He's not one of those people. He's not. Leave us alone. has the facts now, but she won't accept them. They're too horrible for her to acknowledge. Not so much that Rankin could be Kindler, but that she could ever have given her love to such a creature. But we have one ally, her subconscious. 
It knows what the truth is and is struggling to be heard. The will to truth within your daughter is much too strong to be denied. But look here, Wilson. If he's not Charles Rankin, we should be able to expose him without too much difficulty. I'm not interested in proving that he isn't Charles Rankin. I'm only interested in proving that he's Franz Kindler. How do you propose to do that? Through your daughter. Unless I'm mistaken, she's headed for a breakdown. That's the usual result of a person being inwardly divided. Rankin will recognize this, and that's what I'm banking on. What do you mean? Well, he can't afford to trust a person approaching hysteria. He won't. He'll have to act. He may try to escape before she collapses, which would only be an admission of guilt. Or... Go on. He may kill her. You're shocked at my cold-bloodedness. Well, that's quite natural. You're a father. And it's because you are a father, Judge Longstreet, that I'm talking to you like this. Naturally, we'll try to prevent murder being done. However, the proof that murder is a thing would be the strongest evidence that your daughter could have. say he thought I was? A Nazi. Franz Kindler. He made it all up just to trick me. But I didn't tell him anything, and I didn't tell Father anything. I outfaced both of them, Charles. He'll be civil enough to prove you're not that, that Nazi. We'll just find someone who was in your class at college, and he'll identify you, and that's all there'll be to it. What you say is true. He can't touch me. I'm quite safe if he was saying nothing. Oh, I won't, Charles. I promise I won't. They can torture him, and I won't tell them anything. Hmm. Look, chimes have awakened Arthur. We must go down and greet them. We must act naturally. Yes. Smile at them, you understand? Yes. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. We'll face them, darling. And when she struck that angel starred margin, it was a sight to behold. <laughs> Professor, you sure knocked it off. My hat's off to you. Congratulations, Mr. Rankin. Won't the rector be delighted? Nice what I want to know is, if she's going to chime all night long, how's everybody going to get any sleep? We'll face them, darling. All of them. Them chickens of yours are going to be on and off the roost every 15 minutes. That's a good one. <laughs> I told you I want these curtains drawn. I don't like the sunlight streaming in. It's bad for them. Miss Mary, that's rubbish, and you know it. Up at the other house, we never closed the curtains. That has nothing to do with it. This is my house, and I want them drawn. Well, suit yourself, then. It's going to look mighty gloomy for the party. Is it that time already? Were you able to see when they opened the grave, Mr. Randall? Oh, Was yes. it too horrible? Well, not the most pleasant sight. Oh, there's Mary. Hello, oh. Mary. Filling out prescriptions. That's part of this business of hate. Sleeping pills. That's another. <laughs> Mrs. Rankin. Dollar sixty-five. Okay. Warm wrap. No thanks. Sleeping pill. Don't approve of. Them. No. Man does a day's work. Man gets a night's sleep. At least ways he could until that clock start bonging every few minutes. I believe Mrs. Rankin uh, ordered some ice cream. Did ice you? cream? Yeah. Already gone. Fellow said he was going past your house, so I give it to him. And Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Mrs. Rankin. He wouldn't dream of setting foot outside the house unless Fred were along. Who knows? He might be anywhere. The murderer, I mean, waiting for a new victim. I hope you haven't forgotten you were kind enough to invite me, Mrs. Rankin. 
Oh, no, of course not, Mr. Wilson. Oh, Mr. Potter asked me to deliver this. Oh, the ice cream is good. Sarah's waiting for it. I hope it hasn't melted. Well, I won't detain you any longer. Yes, sir. I have a drink for you. Oh, Wilson. just the medicine I need. You know Dr. Hippard? Oh, yes, of course. No. How are you, doctor? Just fine. Excuse me. Yes, sure. Yes. Uh, Grandma Lawrence, can I get you something? Oh, nothing more. Thank you, dear. He's been telling me to do away with the residents of Where's Dr. Rankin? Oh, he'll be here in just a few minutes. I won't have a word with him about that clock. Yes. Oh, where is Dr. Rankin? Oh, thank you, ma'am. Yes, I'm on my last trip. May I get you so much? Thank you. And Jack Philip. And what was that Frenchman? name. Oh, hello, dear. Hello. Uh, Landru. Yes, there may well be ten or a dozen graves out there in those woods. Hello, dear. Autopsy showed the murder was committed just three weeks ago. May I oh, get you no, some tea? Oh, thank you, no. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, may I get you another I wish drink? I could remember what Emerson says about crime. Oh, there's Rankin. He may know. Sorry to be late. I'm Sorry. fine, yeah. thanks. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Darling. Oh. Oh, hello there, Rankin. How are you, Mr. Wilson? You know the quotation? The Hibbert? Emerson? Quotation? Commit a crime and the earth is made of glass? No, I, I don't. Uh, commit a crime and the earth is made of glass. Commit a crime... Commit a crime... and it seems as if a coat of snow fell on the ground, such as reveals in the woods the track of every partridge and fox and squirrel and mole. You cannot recall the spoken word. You cannot wipe out the foot track. You cannot draw up the ladder so as to leave no inlet or clue. You're Mr. Wilson, aren't you? Yeah. Do you know you're our number one suspect in our murder case? Oh? So far, you're the only suspect. Potter put the finger on you. He thinks you committed the crime to get possession of some priceless you antique. Want a drink, Mr. Wilson? Mr. Rankin, I wish you left that clock alone. Harper was a nice, quiet place until it started banging. <laughs> Mary, what's Wilson doing here? I don't know. You invited him, didn't you? What's he after? I don't know. Are you all right? Yes, quite all right. Now, remember, Friday, Mary. Yes, all right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. May I help you, dear? beads fell all over the floor. He, he took her upstairs. When I left, I could still hear her crying. Well, the floodgates have opened. Her subconscious is almost one. From now on, we must know every move that Mrs. Rankin makes. She's never to leave the house unless I know where she's going. If for any reason I can't be found, she's to be detained, no matter on what pretext. You understand, Sarah? Don't worry. She won't get by me. When she snapped those beads, she signed her own death warrant. We're carrying her life in our hands. Every time she walks on a slippery sidewalk, is near something that can fall, drives an automobile, anything that could result in accidental death, her life is in danger. Yes, Judge. She won't get by me.
Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, sir. Today we will attempt to finish with the career of Friedrich the Grosser, König von Preußen, Kurfürst von Brandenburg, Prince von Poland. Frederick the Great to you. Eight sixty. Eight sixty. Hello. Oh, Mary. Mary, this is Charles. Can you hear me, dear? I can't speak very loudly where I am, but I want you to understand this. Something very important has come up. You must come to the church immediately. The church tower. Understand? Yes, I understand. I don't want anybody to know that you're going there. Mary, don't tell anybody you're going. Go to the church tower and leave your car in the rear and come in through the back door. Okay? Goodbye. Right. Well, Stack that wood down over the rest of them and get back to work. Hey, yes, sir. Watch that, Mr. Peabody. You're moved, Go Going someplace? Where to? Well, I asked you where you was going, Miss Mary. I heard. Well? Sarah, you seem to forget I'm no longer a child. I'm a married woman. Well, you ain't been married very long. Wait, Mrs. Rankin. What is it? I'm in a hurry. Well, you don't need to go bite my head off. What is it, Sarah? Well, I... I don't... <laughs> if you've got something to say, say it. What is it, Sarah? I don't know what's got into you lately. Indeed, I don't. You never was mean to me like this back at the old house. Sarah, I... Maybe I've outworn my usefulness. I'm not as young as I used to be. Maybe you don't want me around anymore. For heaven's sake, stop talking such nonsense. Well, it's true, and you know it. I'm going to pack my things and leave here. Indeed, I am. <laughs> Sarah, I'm sorry if I've hurt your feelings. I didn't mean to. Really, I didn't. Sarah. Now, I couldn't get along without you, and you know that, don't you? Well, don't you? Honest, Miss Mary. Yes, honestly, honestly, Sarah. Oh, Miss Mary. Oh, Miss Mary. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, please, wait just a minute. Sarah, you will never leave me, will you? You know how I feel about you, don't you? Yes, I do. It's like it was my own daughter, yes, my I own do. little girl. How could I? Sarah, I've got to go now. Really, I do. I've promised to be somewhere. Uh, well, well, where to, Miss Mary? Stop fussing, Sarah. It's a secret. Oh, Miss Mary! Oh, uh, 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 what's the matter? Uh, Sarah, what's the matter? Uh, my heart. What's the I, matter? I can't breathe. A pain. Oh, no, Miss Mary, please don't leave me. No, no don't leave me. Lie right there and keep quiet. Keep quiet. Now, Maybe I'm dying. You're Miss not Mary. dying. Miss Mary. Stay with me. I won't leave you. One trio, please. Yes, Mary? Uh, look, I was supposed to meet Charles at the clock tower at, right away, and I, I can't get there. Will you go and tell him to please wait for me? And no one, no one's to know where or why you're going. It, it, it's important. All right. Two, three, eight, please. Hello, may I speak to Mr. Wilson? Looks like it's coming up for snow. Yes, that's right. Oh, 
Mrs. Rand, Mrs. Lundstrom. Isn't it after hours? You ladies are working too hard at the library. Oh, no, Mr. Rankin. We closed as usual at 3.30. You're perfectly right. I dismissed class ten minutes early. Yes. That's 3.44. I was playing checkers with Mr. Potter, and I didn't realize. Yes, you know what you are, Mr. Rankin. You're the absent-minded professor. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. Oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> today. I am. And you sure are. Good afternoon, Mr. Potter. Good afternoon, Mr. Hill. I'm sorry, Mr. Potter. I can't find them. What? The earmuffs. It's right over there by the mittens. Come on, Mr. Potter. Help us look. Well, I'll be right back in a minute, Professor. Right over there by that box where I told you there was. Those? Yeah, the latest thing out. How much do you want for? 85 cents. Well, that's an awful lot. Well, they come high this year. You want this thing? Well, I'll keep it. You know, uh, Mr. Potter, you're a bad influence. I, uh, I intended only to spend a couple of minutes. You made me spend the whole afternoon. Look what time it is. Yeah. I'd like to get even. <laughs> it's your move. You really had the wind up. Golly. You can still smell the glue where you joined it. Look there, Professor. Like I told you, it's coming up for snow. <laughs> Charles? He didn't go to the church. No, no, Sarah. Sarah? What about Sarah? Well, just as I was leaving, Sarah had some kind of an attack. Mm -hmm. She's resting now, yes. And Jeff said it wasn't very serious, but that I, I should stay with her. Mm -hmm. What's the matter, Charles? Then why did you want me to go to the church? You said it was important. It was important. Nothing actual. It's my sense of proportion is failing me these days. Please, Charles, what is it? I'm sorry. I've just begun to feel a strain. You see, I have my weak moments, too. I'll tell you in my own good time. They found out anything more? No, nothing. There's nothing to find out, unless you. I don't know. I haven't seen anybody all day. I've been in my room. There's a rumor going around that there's an arrest to be made. My headaches. The incident of the beads yesterday made me doubt your strength. I thought maybe you'd gone to your father and told him something. If you had... You didn't have to be afraid. No. Why did you tell Noah? Hmm? Why, what about? Didn't you see him? No, why should I see Noah? 
But did you come here directly from the church? Am I being cross-examined? Oh, no, but when I found I couldn't leave Sarah, I called Noah and told him to go there and tell you I was detained. I told you not to call anybody. Oh, but surely Noah... Call him and tell him not to go. Well, I can't. I talked to him over... Call him, I say! He's gone! If he dies, his blood will be on your hands. What are you saying? It's your meddling that's done this. I'd have been all right if it wasn't for you. After that, you... You had to be here. On that day... Calling Noah! Did you kill Noah? Yes, if he goes to the church and climbs up that ladder! It was I you intended to kill, wasn't it? No. Why wasn't it I? John Skindler! Kill me. Kill me, I want you to. I couldn't face life knowing what I've been to you and what I've done to Noah. But when you kill me, don't put your hands on me. Here. Use this. Mary. Oh. Operator. Uh, operator, get me the uh, state police. Yes, the uh, roadblocks are up. We're watching the railroad station, and he's in hiding in the woods. If he is what I think he is, it's going to be easy. We'll do everything possible to bring him back. She's gone, on. Mr. Wilson. She's not in the house. Clock tower? I don't know. Well, if that's where he's hiding, if she gets there before us... What do we do? Call Captain Samuels and the deputies. Get all the help you can. Where? <laughs> Church. What about you? I'll oh, get there. Now hurry up now. What are you? Your sister may be still alive. Cemetery. No one saw me. I needed the excuse. I was afraid you wouldn't let me up. What do you want? I came to kill you. No, no, Mary. 
die. It's you that's going to die. You were meant to fall through that ladder. You're going to fall. I don't mind if I take you with me. You are a fool. I searched the woods. I watched them. Yeah, like God, looking into the lands. I'll hide in the woods. They won't search there again. A day or two, they'll be sure I got out of town. When they find me, they'll know you're still here. But darling, you're on the verge of a breakdown. Now you've cracked. Why else would you leave your bed? Climb to an empty church tower in the dead of night. Any child could see you'd wind up killing yourself. Killing is what led you here. It won't help you now. Look out the window. Look! Well, that's, that's an old trick, Mr. Wilson, a very poor trick. Tricks. That's all you know is tricks. I don't need any tricks. And no matter what happens to me, tricks won't do you any good. You're finished, Herr Franz Kindler. citizens of Harper. They've come after you. The plain little ordinary people, the ones you've been laughing at, have Franz Kindler. Well, you can't fool them anymore. Oh, sure, you can kill me, Mary, half the people down there. But there's no escape. You have the world and it closed in on you till there was only Harper. That closed in on you and there was only this room. And this room, too, is closing in on you. It's not true, the things they say I did. It's all their idea. I followed orders. You gave the orders. I, I only did my duty. Don't send me back to them. I can't face them. I'm not a criminal. You are. busted and my head cocked. From here on in, my friends, I'm taking it easy. Well, I'll get you another ladder, Mr. Wilson. You've had enough trouble. Good night, Mary. Pleasant dreams. An incredible film, from an incredible director as well, although some people did not quite think that way during the time of its release, including none other than Orson Welles himself. During interviews during the later part of his life, Welles stated on many occasions that The Stranger was his least favorite of his personal films. Oddly enough, this was the only one of Orson Welles' films to turn a profit upon its original theatrical release. Wells began his career in radio and theater, and his debut film as a writer and director and actor was Citizen Kane, almost always hailed as the greatest American film ever made by the American Film Institute and the Academy Awards. Following The Stranger, Wells would direct ten more feature films, both for Hollywood and Europe, until 1978, 
After that, he continued to appear in numerous programs as a host and presenter and even a narrator until his death from heart attack in late 1985. The Stranger is one of the lesser known pieces of his work, but I feel it's still an important landmark film. It featured the first on-screen on portrayal of Nazi war crimes by a theatrical production, was the first time that Wells really portrayed a villain on screen. You could argue that Citizen Kane was the first time, but he was a protagonist. It also had Edward G. Robinson, who was known at the time for playing smarmy gangster types during the 1930s, as playing as a straight man, a government agent, protagonist, and hero of sorts. That's all the time we have for this episode. We are three times a day from Sunday to Fridays. Join us at the same time next week when we review the 1951 war film Go For Broke. I'm George Roth, and this is Film of the Century of the Week on Channel 5.